people will decide from their guts what they're going to do, right? If you, if there's people all over the place talking stink on Walmart all the time, right? Walmart's horrible. There's class action suits of the way they, they buy things from third world countries where they don't pay them. And the lines at Walmart are bigger, bigger parking lot than any place else in the world, right? Because in the end, you have to have a market viable solution. So when I look out at all these white jackets, if I'm talking to you and I, I and if you care about all these issues that we're talking about, you will never ever say to your guest, you should eat my food because it's socially responsible. Instead, you should make socially responsible food and then make it taste so damn good that they want to pay you a really high price to eat at your place. Maybe that's all. We're farm to table. Right? You have to kind of go check. Right? But from the younger consumer standpoint, Right, that there is a huge shift in the perception of the value of local food. Now, whether that's the lettuce is fresher, crisper, and better, <coughs> right, or whether it's I'm supporting the farmer, or whether it's I'm looking for organic, or any of those various motives that people bring with their wallets to a farmer's market or to a restaurant or to a supermarket, that shift has happened. I, I, I can feel that, right? You see the people walking in the office with the white, the yellow boxes of CSA, right? That's happening more and more. You can now get eggs, right, on a CSA. Um, you, you go to town and you're using a whole pig, right, including the eggs. And how much yield? 100%. That's the cool thing, right? 100% you get to yield on that pig. Right, so I asked him if he uses the hair for thread, and he was like, I need a But can I ask one more thing, and then I'll just play, okay? Uh, I heard Alan and Richard, and I think it was Chuck talking uh, a couple months ago, and Alan brought up those stats. And so I went back and took a look at those stats, because they're really interesting. And he's talking about a 10% change in the amount of local food we buy. But I, but I want you to understand this, because I think this is important. We're talking a big hole, right? <coughs> We're not producing 10% of that. A ten, the 10% 10 change he's talking about is another 10% to have that huge effect. But that isn't buying one tenth more. That's double. Right? We got a long way to go, people. Really a long way to go. Nothing wrong with the farmer. The farmer's all day, they'll be here for a long time, they're still here. And they'll be here. It's just going to be a matter of um, the next generation of farmers, it's, it's really tough to, to get them in. So if you folks can look at it kind of like this, you know, if you, we, we went out and talked to everybody in the industry, what is on their mind today? Probably how much the, the gasoline costs. Yeah, top of mind. But you know what? We're talking about egg and energy as if it's different. It's really not different. Food is fuel. It's probably the most important fuel there is. Yeah, so, so now for those of you who agree that you know oil prices going up and we got to be careful because we're sitting out here in the middle of the ocean, think about that and start to do the small little things you guys can do. And it may be as small as putting that note inside of the suggestion box. Maybe grabbing the produce manager, it can do three things, whatever. You know, so each individual person can do just a little bit. And all that adds up to a tremendous amount. Most people in Polynesia food stamps can't afford to buy local. Well, what if, as businesses, you banded together and told the farmer, okay, you know what? I'll pay you 25 cents more all for your stuff. If you're able to take that 25 cents, put it aside, and go sell it to the lower income people and make food available to them. And then you let you teach them to eat and support local and appreciate um, uh, the local foods and, and the nutrition of it. And possibly, you know, we grow these people to be able to, uh, to understand why it's important for them to support going forward. I mean, it's things like that that I think, you know, at some point as a community and as groups, we have to do this because I have told this to some businesses and people are like, oh, great idea, and nothing comes up with it. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that, these types of partnerships where we can provide.
provide food for a bigger community that is going to make a, um, a bigger impact. And I think at some point we should maybe have a discussion like that. You know, you know before we go to this question, <coughs> I agree with that 100%. What was that? She, she said we need more farmers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but let me say this before we go to this question. You know, one of the things I thought was really interesting that someone mentioned you recently was back with NK. It was at the Food Bank fundraiser. He had that suckling pig, the yeah. whole pig, and, he, and, he, and he, he could have the whole pig. And I said, how much do you do you have with that stuff, with that pig? And he said, 100%. And I, went, I was joking with him, but I mean, it was 100%. So it's like Richard Hawk trying to address electricity and trying to address all these things so that he can take the money and put it elsewhere or give his employees something to live on besides just paying them. So it's really smart. And so I was asking, I was questioning Ed about all that stuff. He goes, you know, my view on restaurants is that I just want to turn it upside down and see how I can do it better. So if he pays two two dollars and something cents for that pig whole, then if he can get a hundred percent yield, then instead of four or five dollars per pound, if he can get a hundred percent yield, then he's still only paying two dollars and something cents. He can mark it up at the regular price, and then he can take that money and use it for something else. So that's another consideration that I think I thought was really ingenious about Ed and Richard Ha over there and Alan Wong, as a matter of fact. I don't get the work work up here too much, but I mean, I think that that's something that as chefs, as professionals, to learn the ingenuity of it all, as opposed to just buying the ribeye or just buying the, 